Hey, what's up guys? This is iTech World 11. Here's my unboxing and review of HTC's latest and most thought out smartphone, the highly leaked HTC One M8. This device, much like last year, is a desperate attempt from HTC to bring back profitability to their corporation. This M8 received an enormous amount of hype and attention to and through its launch, and I'm here today to show you my feelings of it. We'll quickly start out with the unboxing, and just like last year, HTC has done a very nice job. You'll quickly be aware of their well-crafted and distinct packaging, really only rivaled by Apple and Oppo. Around the box, HEC has supplied virtually every specification and feature of this device, but we'll meticulously take a look at that later. Inside the packaging, we have nothing special. The phone sitting on top, followed by some nice looking accessories, a wall charger, micro USB charging cable, and a Verizon style black and red earphones with extra tips. We also have your standard documentation. Something special in this packaging, though, isn't an object, it's HTC's Advantage program. This program very simply gives you 50 gigabytes of Google Drive cloud storage for two years, a six-month guaranteed replacement for any cracked screens, and HTC's software update guarantee. On to the review portion, and naturally the first thing to start with is this device's most polished feature, literally. As you all know, I am referring to the build. This phone is now 90% aluminum with a brushed metal finishing. It also comes in three colors, a silver, a gunmetal, and a gold, and the gold appears to be a Best Buy exclusive right now. Personally, the silver is a bit too light, and the gold is a bit too gold for me. The gunmetal is a comfortable, elegant, unobtrusive, and great feeling option to go for, at least for me. It also features the lightly brushed aluminum, or aluminium, texture on the back of the phone. Now the M8 is definitely on the thicker side, even a little bit thicker than the previous M7, coming in at 9.4 millimeters. Not to say this isn't a comfortable phone though, even with this heavy build at 160 grams compared to the Galaxy S5 with 145 grams or the iPhone 5S at 112 grams, this phone feels comfortably spread out over the rather tall 9.4mm height and with the slightly curved back, it sits nicely in your hands even with having the relatively small hands that I do. Now unfortunately this device power button is located at a bit of an awkward position for small hands in fact, it nicely blends in with the IR transmitter up top, which is a great way to control almost any TV without needing a separate remote. But HTC isn't planning on having you pressing the power button often. Instead, HTC is relying on additions to Sense 6.0 on top of Android 4.4.2. HTC brought over LG's knock-on feature, as well as implementing their own gesture controls from the lock screen. I really enjoyed this ease of use and simplicity with these features have brought, in fact, the only downside I've found is that you have to be holding it that when it's level or horizontal, you cannot really use this because it expects you to pick it up. But this tool works very well, it's very effective, and it's really stopped me from using the power button, and it's a great effective tool that HTC brought over. HTC has also made Sense 6 a much better skin. There's still no hiding that it is a skin, and I'll always be a fan of stock Android, especially because I'm a fan of minimalism, transparency, and stock application icons. But with Sense 6 on top of Android 4.4.2, there really isn't too much that looks like HTC has made changes just for the fact of making changes. And in fact, the biggest differences on this skin would be the lock screen is slightly different. There, of course, is blink feed, the app drawer, and then the notification and quick toggle setting drawers are probably the biggest changes. Blink feed is still blink feed, and you either love it or hate it. I'm currently, you know, I don't really have strong feelings for it, I'd prefer not to be there, but it is a good way to kill a few minutes just as The Verge said. Now a couple other areas where I don't really like this Sense UI, in the notification center when you go to the quick toggles, you cannot customize it, you can move them around but you cannot add or delete toggles, and also for the brightness you don't get specific controls, you only get 3 di dials and an automatic setting. And then there are some smaller things such as the app drawer scrolling vertically which feels kind of unnatural and weird to me. And then some nice features such as the multitasking drawer giving it the ability to see more than on stock Android and the ability to clear all at once so I prefer this over stock Android in the multitasking aspect. One of my overall and favorite aspects of Sense 6 would be the camera UI. Now I'm not necessarily talking about the settings although those are pretty nice and fairly easy to use. I'm talking about the selection mode and it's a very nice 3x2 grid or 2x3 depending on portrait or landscape and allows you to quickly access and change between your different shooting settings. Now that we're already in the camera, we should go ahead and start talking about the quality and this is a controversial topic. Now I'm going to come out and say it right now, I like this camera. I like the quality, I like the low light performance, I like the depth of field, I like the UI, everything about it is very nice to me. 
Now, right as a disclaimer, I'm going to say I am not a camera freak. I don't crave overnight about having a great camera. And really, the only reason I use camera might be for some Skype, FaceTime, uh, Snapchat, social media such as Instagram and Twitter. So I really don't need 20 megapixel DSLR shots. In fact, I'd be happy with an iPhone 4S camera if that was needed in a smartphone. So I'm basically saying that this is above average camera certainly, and even though it's a low megapixel count, I still found that low light performance was excellent, every other circumstance for me was pretty good. Now I could see some problems with this if you're at a sporting event or amusement park or uh, on vacation you need some more zooming, but for me and every other shot I took, this did a very nice job, I found it was sharp, the colors could have been truer to life but they were pretty good. And I'm just, I'm impressed with this camera. If you're someone that doesn't demand high quality, perfect shots, this is a great camera. If you're a camera freak, well, it's a solid camera, but not great. Fortunately, HEC has added some nice features in the software, such as the duo mode, the selfie mode, some foreground and background changing modes, and some different themes and filters that really allow you to edit and take better photos. There's also tons of manual controls, which are a great feature about this, and really makes you the ability to have a nicer photo. But unlike last year's HTC One, HTC is advertising more than its great low light performance. They're also advertising the new dual mode, which is the reasoning for the two cameras on the back, and this gives you the ability to, as you've heard a million times, change the focus after the fact. Now this feature certainly isn't perfect, and there are a couple of quirks that if you're zoomed in, or if you're too close up, it will not allow you to change the focus, so you have to be a normal distance away without any zoom on, which is kind of annoying because you a lot of shots require those. Even when this does work, it's not always perfect. Now it's certainly a cool feature and it works pretty well, but it adds a lot of digitalization and software, especially in the blur. It'll add additional blur to make it look like it's doing more work, and generally it does a great job, but occasionally it'll add blur to the foreground or the background where it's not needed, and sometimes it just doesn't look natural. Now HTC has also added a lot of cool filters and sharing and editing options and really makes your pictures look a lot nicer. These range from simple foreground and background changing only effects to the filters which change the whole picture. Here are some pictures that I shot with the M8. These are all with auto uh, everything so you can see kind of how the camera decides for itself and these are all in actually kind of low light, it was kind of dark outside for these pictures. This is a video test with the HTC One M8. You can see some of the focusing. Not too bad. You can hear the audio quality. You can zoom in while recording. And there's also slow-mo video with this, which is pretty nice. Now powering this guy is a Qualcomm Snapdragon quad core 2.3 GHz 801 chip with 2 gigs of RAM. Now I have a dedicated video where I took a look at the speed and gaming on this and ran some benchmarks, so I'll have that annotated if you have this turned on, or you can check the link in the description if you want to see my full gaming test. Basically this guy is super fast, probably about the fastest I've ever had in the Android experience, maybe on par with the Nexus 5 running stock Android. This thing is seriously blistering fast, web browsing is actually very smooth, gaming is great, no frames are dropped at all, playback of HD content looks phenomenal, everything is just super quick and stutter free. Now just above the processor and just under the Gorilla Glass 3 scratch resistant display is the 5 inch 1920x1080 full HD screen and I'm telling you this is may be the best screen I've had on an Android device. It's slightly better than even my Nexus 5 with pretty much the identical screen in terms of size and resolution, and this thing is true to life, viewing angles are very good, the brightness is great, the low light is great, everything about this resolution and this quality and the size is just so nice, and everything really looks great. Right above the screen is a decent quality but high megapixel, 5 megapixel camera, and we have HTC's legendary boom sound speakers. Now I want to say I did make a separate video on this demonstrating the sound quality of this, so again I'll have that annotated and a link in the description if you want to check out the specific sound quality and the loudness with the speakers. But I'll tell you right now, they are awesome, I will leave you to check out my other video, again in the description. 
So now pretty much the last aspect of this phone to talk about is battery life. Now I do plan on doing a full battery test and by the time you're watching this it may already be done so check the description or click on the annotation for a full battery test where I have a time lapse of playing about a few hours YouTube videos until it eventually dies like I did with my Nexus 5. But if I don't have that video up by now, this is a great performing battery life. It's got the new 2600 milliamp battery and this is actually a device that could get me through a full day easily on Android and standby are just about the same as any other Android device. I don't really have anything to say uh, for or against the standby time, but battery life is actually pretty solid with this and you should definitely get a full day out of it. So at the end of the day, the HTC One is a great performing phone. It's got awesome, awesome build quality. The speakers are fantastic. The screen is incredible. The camera for me, like I said, is awesome, but for somebody else, it might be okay. And for some other people, it might be even better than what I think. Overall, this is just about the perfect phone for me. Some things I would like to see is a little bit thinner, lighter, and a little bit less bezels. But I really do like the new micro SD card up to 128 gigs. There's really a lot going for this phone. So until now, this is the HTC One M8 video. Definitely check out my other videos in the description covering this, including some case reviews. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, check out my website, and I will see all of you guys later. Thanks for watching.